can take the day off. Mm. Well, I've just been to ask to got my shopping done, so it's out of the way for the weekend. I've got cars to wash, some gardening to get done, and then I'm off to football. And there's an egg hunt on Sunday, and there's a fair on Monday. It should be a great weekend. What's all this lot doing here? What's going on? There must be something happening today. What day is it anyway? It's Good Friday. Why is it called that? Why is it a bank holiday? Above all, the law must be respected. Crime can only be kept in check if we demand the severest penalties. We call on all who administer the law to remember that capital punishment is often in the best interests of the people. Violence must be repaid with violence. We must demand retribution when wrongs have been committed. The sacrifice of a life here and there will protect the benefits that we all enjoy. May God be with you and make this the greatest festival of... Let me take you back to Jerusalem around 30 AD. That lot are a crowd of people of Jerusalem, another rabble. Oh, sorry, sorry, I mean another group of townsfolk just like yourselves. Feel free to chip in as we go along and we'll tell you all about it. Citizens and visitors to Jerusalem, a moment please. At this solemn Passover time, that's a Jewish festival, you have the privilege of hearing from your religious leaders. I have a message to touch your hearts and inspire your lives from Annas and Caiaphas, your high priests. Hmm, religion. What's the relevance of that in today's postmodern age? Postmodern age? She means today's modern scientific world. Did you know that the Indians decided to put a man on the moon last year? Thank you for coming. Praise silence. Today we remember that only God can set his people free. So when we kill the Passover lamb this year, we pray that it may be a sign of hope for the entire world. The Passover festival is not only a time for remembrance, it's also a time for thanksgiving and rededication to our duty. We are grateful that during this year our law and order policies have meant we have successfully avoided the riots and disturbances of previous years. Now, we are able to take advantage of the Roman protection and make a good profit for ourselves. At this time of year, let us make a fresh resolve to do our duty well. We are superior to other peoples in many ways. Let us demonstrate it by our hard work and obedience. Let everyone do his duty, know his place, and be content. Oh, no! The age. Sounds familiar. Religion hasn't changed much over the years then.
But they're calling you a king. Well, why shouldn't we? Jesus is our leader. Yes. Our kingdom yes. is at hand. Our kingdom is at hand. Yes. Yes. Well, don't waste your breath, Jesus. Come on, let's go into the temple. And you, priest, go home. <laughs> now. Look, we are, we are here to celebrate the festival too. Now, it's true, I could shut this crowd up. <laughs> but these very walls and stones that make up this place are so rotten that they themselves would still cry out and make a din. But it isn't too late. Follow me, and I will show you such peace and joy as you have never dreamed of. You're nothing but a troublemaker, Jesus. A blaspheming rabble-rouser. Mark my word, we'll get you. I offer them a kingdom, and they call me names. Are we going to let them spoil our fun? No! Shall we go on to the temple? Yes! Come on, Come on. then. Jesus! Yeah? Here. Well, we could, but the temple is a very special place. You see, God is all around us, but people find it very hard to see it. So the temple building is at the center of our community to remind us of God's presence. We can always find it there. So, we can still have a party inside? Built for parties. Of course we can. There's nothing God likes better than seeing his people enjoy themselves in his home. It's the most alive and vibrant yeah. place on earth. against the shekel, some of your coins have been clipped, and the temple tax has gone up again. But this won't give me enough for the sacrifice. I can't go in empty-handed. Take that up with the priest, they said, the prices. My father's house should be a house of prayer for all the world. And you have turned it into a den of thieves. Get these parasites out of here. <laughs> Caiaphas, my father's house was desecrated when you turned it into a market. I have only cleansed it of the filth of that corruption. On whose authority? God's authority. So do you claim to be God? God, God is my father. We are all sons of God. Then why don't you act like it? Why do you stalk here in the shadows, weaving your webs of politics and profit? Instead of getting out there among the people, proclaiming the good news of the coming of the kingdom! Yeah! He quotes Isaiah. Blasphemy! That's blasphemy to you, all right. You who close your ears to the truth and shut your eyes to the light. So, tell me, Jesus, why have you come here? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, to let the deaf hear and the blind see. <laughs> To free the oppressed and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor! Yeah! Yeah! There's some more blasphemy for you. How do you like that one? You have no right to accuse us. Caius Pass is high priest of the people. I'm his assistant, and we are the guardians of God's holy temple. <laughs> Destroy this temple, Annas, and I will rebuild it in three days. Give them a sign, Lord. They won't believe unless you give them a miracle. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Prove to us your miraculous powers. But if you don't mind, we'd like to get on with our party. Now, let's start with some stories. Who'd like to hear some stories? Yay, yeah, yay! Yeah. Yeah, come on, then. Come and see us all done. You want to hear some stories? Come get around. Just a minute. Hold on. These children do not belong here. The temple's not a playground. I tell you, unless you become like a little child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. All of you. Think about a little child. Look, jump up here, Rick. Good lad. Oh, steady! <laughs> Try that again. Go on, jump up there. That's it. Now let's let everyone see you. Now think about a little child. He is open, honest, 
uncluttered by all the burdens that adults drape around their shoulders. If he's happy, he laughs. Give us a giggle. Yeah, you see? If he's sad, he cries. There is no hypocrisy in a child. Yeah, jump down. Now look into your own hearts. Can you not find these qualities within yourselves? I tell you all, if you would see God, do not look for him among the ranks of learned scholars and works of philosophers, nor yet among those of robed clerics. But rather look around you, and you will see him playing in the faces of your children. Can we have our story now, Jesus? Yeah, of course you can. Can we have one of our children? Uh, let me see. Yeah, I think so. I'll, I'll tell you a story about two brothers whose father wanted them to work in his orchard picking fruit. Now, it was a glorious day. Like today, the sun was shining and the beach was just a short walk down the road. I'd go to the beach. Yeah, I think I would have too. But do you know what happened? What? Well, the first brother, he says, OK, Dad, I'll pick the fruit. But as soon as his dad had gone to work, he got his swimming stuff. And he hit the beach without picking a single apple. What did the other one do? Oh, he had a row with his dad. He said, this is much too nice a day to waste it picking apples. But when his dad had gone, he realized that he'd upset him. And he felt bad about that. So he decided he would go to the fields and pick the apples instead. Now, here's a question for you. Which of these children did what his father wanted him to do? The one who said he would pick the fruit? but hit the beach, or the one who said he wouldn't, but did pick the apples. The one who picked the apples. You're right as well, then. Well done. Yes, the one who said he wouldn't, but did pick the apples. And another question for you, what does this story mean? That what you say is not as important as what you do? Well done, Sarah. It's no good being full of fine words if we don't act on them. Wishing someone a nice day when they're hungry is not going to put food on their plate. And if we come to the temple, and we pray for all sorts of needy people, and then go away and do nothing about it in our daily lives, we are what we call hypocrites. And when we stand before God, He will say, I don't know you. So Jesus, what must we do to enter God's kingdom? James, you must become a new person. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul. And you must love your neighbor as yourself. For it is in your neighbor that you meet God. If only all of us, every time we meet another person, would realize that through that person, we are in the presence of God. With how much more respect would we treat one another? It's hard. But I tell you, whatever you do to the least of these little ones, you do that to God. Now, who's got a song for us? Hey, Judith, go for it. He's got the whole world. He's got the whole world. He's got the whole world.